What is a little known secret to reducing my anxiety? We all have anxiety. You, me, everyone, everyone, anyone who doesn't say they have anxiety is lying because we all get these tiny little stress bubbles. We can't sleep at night. We're worried about a test, a homework, our kids, our job, whatever. And today I'm gonna to reveal or share for the first time ever something I do to kind of just constantly manage and maintain a lower level anxiety than I probably should be having considering how much stuff I'm trying to do, right? What is it? Okay, it's called what I call the life-changing magic of the five hour walk. I know, sounds like a really long cure, doesn't it? Five hours, but here's the thing, here's the thing. I read two books uh, recently that I highly recommend. One is called The Black Swan by Nassim Taleb. The other one is called Civil Disobedience and Other Essays by Henry David Thoreau. In this one is an essay called Walking. And in this one is an essay called Why I Do All This Walking. I know I'm popping in and out of the camera here, but here's what I want to tell you. Those two essays written by one of the most famous behavioral economists of all time, Nassim Taleb, and the famous naturist who wrote Walden 150 years ago, Henry David Thoreau, both say the same thing, which is that going on extremely long walks through rural, rural is always a word I have trouble saying, or urban landscapes actually gives you an incredible amount of mental stimulation, of fresh air, of incongruent thoughts piecing together, of perspective, right? How do I do this? I'm married, I got little kids. Where, where, where and when am I going on my five hour walks? Here's what I do. Uh, my wife goes to sleep pretty early. My kids go to sleep pretty early. It's like suddenly it's like 7.30 p.m. and I'm like, hey Les, do you mind if I just go out for a long walk? She's like, sure. So I lock the door up and I just disappear into the night. It's great. The point I try to make is I don't take a cell phone. I'm not plugged in. I'm not texting people. I just have cue cards in my pocket, a pen in another pocket for ideas. And when I'm walking around the city, and I live right in downtown Toronto, so when I'm walking downtown, urban walking, urban flaneur, um, it's very stimulating to me. And I always gain perspective. And I always find that my anxieties and the pressures and the stresses I'm managing in my life always dissipate because I'm given the perspective of walking through a city. Um, I just dropped a word that you may not have heard before, flaneur or urban flaneur. It's a word that used to be popular in France 150 years ago that essentially means stroller or somebody who is of a learned sort but gains a lot of wisdom and processes their wisdom by just doing really long walking. Well, I think that word is going to make a comeback. Can you consider yourself to be a flaneur or an urban flaneur to use walking as a way to process your thoughts? How else do I do this? Here's another way I do it. I don't have an office. Purposefully, I don't have an office. Could I have an office? Sure. Have I tried having an office? Many times. But what I find is that unless I am stimulated by constant change, different coffee shops, different sidewalks, different parks, then I don't have a chance for my brain to sift through, sort through, and put together incongruent ideas. So for that reason, I always try to maintain uh, a, a working situation that's never uh, consistent. It's always fluid. The other thing that goes into this, and I've talked about this before, guys, some of you may remember this, is whenever you have a meeting, make it a walking meeting. Okay, the vast majority of my meetings, probably your meetings are on the phone. What do you do? You plug in your headphones, you go for a walk. The average person walks six kilometers an hour, which means when you have a one hour meeting, that's a six kilometer walk. If you have two of those a day, or three of those a day, you just got 12 or 18 kilometers of walking in, which is just as good for your body as running. It takes longer, but it's just as good. Just by walking around. What's one of the best cures for anxiety I can tell you about? There's lots, and we've talked about lots on this channel. But one that you probably aren't doing, which I'm just starting to do a lot myself, is going on these gigantic long walks. After your kids are in bed, during your day, finding these little moments where you can just disappear into your thoughts and gain perspective. What do you do for your anxiety? Give me a shot, let me know. Drop a comment in below. I will read and I will reply to every single one. And if you haven't already, hit the big subscribe button so we can keep connected.